It's a summer evening and preparations are underway for a dinner party in a fashionable neighborhood near Tel Aviv. On the surface, it looks just like another relaxed rooftop party overlooking the Mediterranean. Near the end of the evening, each of the individuals share a few parting comments. It is an extraordinary gathering. I run the Al-Qaeda section for all the operations in the U.S. and internationally. I'm assistant director with the FBI in charge of our Washington field office. I'm the uh, director of Homeland Security for the state of New York. I'm the deputy administrator for the Drug Enforcement Administration. I'm deputy chief and I'm in charge of Homeland Security for the Cleveland Police. I'm the chief of police in Montgomery County, Maryland. I'm with the uh, San Diego Sheriff's Department. I'm the Homeland Security Director for the state of Alabama. I'm with the Department of Homeland Security. I am Director of the Nevada Department of Public Safety. What is happening this evening is a compelling chapter in the war on terror. Tonight's meeting is the culmination of a week in which top American law enforcement officials traveled to Israel to meet their counterparts. The program was designed especially for American law enforcement and homeland security leaders and policymakers. It has emerged as a critical counter-terror program since September 11th. Surprisingly, it's not a government program. It is privately funded by a Washington, D.C. organization. It's the Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs, or JINSA. Today, we can see how the world around us has changed in the war on terror. What is not seen is what is being done about it on a global basis. For today, the war on terror knows no boundaries. It requires global cooperation. Terrorism today is a global phenomenon. The Islamic fundamentalist movement is not a local movement in the Middle East or in Europe or United States. It's a global movement. And I believe that part of the solution is a global reaction. It's the cooperation that has been going on around the globe that will ultimately uh, allow us to prevail. It began as a request for help, the Law Enforcement Exchange Program. We received a letter from a high-level law enforcement official in New York City. They were confronted with the new reality that they had not been confronted with before 9-11. They searched for a way of dealing with these issues, and they reached out to various places, particularly JINSA, because JINSA had the expertise. The beauty of JINSA is they've been doing this for the flag officers of our military branches. In two, 2002, that we actually did our first business in, in terms of the first uh, exchange trip to Israel uh, with American law enforcement personnel. So it was really a matter of months. Since 2002, officials from every corner of the United States have traveled under JINSA sponsorship to Israel. The week-long program offers the Americans rare access to Israeli lesson books. It reveals how Israelis prevent and respond to terrorism, including suicide bombers. These experts share the art of intelligence gathering. They explain how Israelis connect the dots. There is an emphasis on understanding the enemy and their tactics. The Americans leave Israel knowing how to better share real-time intelligence, the handling of sources, and how Israelis organize a coordinated response in the aftermath of a terrorist attack. They have developed out of necessity, given their history and their experience with terrorism for, for decades, they've developed both prevention protocols and techniques and response protocols and techniques that work, which they are totally willing to teach and share. There are a few places that you're going to find real-world experience that you would find and that we found in dealing with, uh, with the Israelis and the police force there. And they secured their guard without hesitating, pushing the terrorists from the entrance of the coffee shop to the road. And you get to see the actual places where some of these attacks have taken place. Many of them left as they were, uh, pockmarked with shrapnel and, and, and such. You've obviously given us a lot to think about, a lot of best practices to go back and put into place. And I promise you uh, that we'll incorporate some of the great things that you've done here 
uh, in the state of Alabama. You so willingly and freely provided advice that you paid so dearly to, to gather. We have a lot of experience and we are a small nation and we paid for our experience with blood. We don't want the American people, the American police, pay with blood like the Israeli nation. A CNN three-part series from Israel chronicled the results. Believing U.S. first responders can learn a lot about suicide attacks from their Israeli counterparts, the Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs hosts week-long training sessions in Israel. As they made their way through Jerusalem, these U.S. law enforcement officials got to feel what it's like to live with intense security measures. While in Israel, the terror threat is hard to ignore. In the United States, law enforcement officials say it's easy to forget. At some point, I think in America, we're going to have to, uh, you know, we'll react. Uh, we'd like to say we're, we're going to proact, and certainly us being here on this trip is part of that proactivity. In 2004, JINSA expanded the program, bringing Israelis to the United States for regional conferences. This is Para 11 News at 6. Experience truly is the best teacher, especially when it comes to anti-terrorism efforts. Hennepin County is getting input and advice from Israel's top counterterrorism team. We've had conferences in the United States where we've brought the same, very same Israelis that we deal with there, we've brought them here and been able through economy of scale to expose them to literally thousands of law enforcement leaders in this country. 350 intelligence experts along with security teams from Disney and top hotels joined for this unique exchange. I watched people's faces. I turned around and watched all 350 faces when they were rolling that film. And not only were they watching, they were seriously taking some notes. We launched uh, the first conference series in the United States in New Jersey in 2004. Uh, since then we've done eight conferences and uh, with a combined attendance of over 6,000 law enforcement officers in this country. Jinsa's program is applauded throughout the law enforcement community. This was an outstanding uh, experience, something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. What you have done is you, back in October, have already made the 1.4 million people who live in Suffolk County safer. I've had the opportunity to uh, go on exchange programs with, in Japan and also in Poland. Uh, don't come anywhere close to the experience I've had here. This has just been uh, just terrific. What I'm going to take back and I'm going to share with the sheriffs throughout the United States and in the major counties, hopefully, is going to be for the benefit of all of us in this fight that we have to win. I would have to say that uh, without reservation, this is my 36th year of federal law enforcement, and this is in fact the finest training initiative that I've ever been a, a participant in. The interest is phenomenal in terms of inquiries into uh, possibilities of participating in our program, how one becomes eligible to participate in the program. It's a real eye-opener. I mean, I, I've been to Israel on these uh, LEAP programs and, and watched people write down notes, 70, 80, 90 pages, get on the phone and actually call back to their, their offices and actually adapt, adapt the, the training, what they're learning there immediately. Well, they are very enthusiastic and they are very interested and they ask a lot of questions and whenever we give a seminar they always ask for the next one. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, they are very happy with this cooperation. We thought this was so important, so vital to American national interests that we just had to do it. I want to thank our American police. You guys are our first line of defense. You are our first call. You are our first responders. And for me, you're first in our hearts. The Law Enforcement Exchange Program. It began as a request for help. It has become a commitment.